Welcome to the Mrs. V Shift Stories. Very excited tonight because we have a very inspiring woman, Sally Ann Ferguson. Welcome. Thank you. Very excited to be here on this Zoom with you. Yes, and I mean, look, it's we've actually, for those of you who don't know, we've, we've been trying to connect because Sally Ann is incredibly busy and running around the world doing amazing things. <laughs> And one of the incredible things I wanted to talk about is her business in origin, which is about really setting a tone for bringing quality and um, authenticity to products, which we'll talk about later and very excited to share that with the viewers. So firstly, tell me your story. Okay, fantastic. Well, I think like everybody, how do you sum up your story into just one section of your life? So um, I think there'd be many stories I could say, but I'm, I'm going to choose one that was probably um, definitely one of the most impactful because it's the first one that comes to mind. And that was actually about the age of 24. I, I got, I guess, a big life lesson and a big life gift. And it was actually my brother's challenge. Um, but as anyone knows, when you go through a, a probably a health challenge with a family member, it affects everybody, not just the person going through it and um, often the, the lessons and the journey are equally as big and sometimes even bigger for the carers and the loved ones around the situation cool. and what actually was the, the situation was my brother was diagnosed with over 400 tumors in his kidneys up to thousands at a microscopic level mm -hmm. and uh, he was uh, 29 at the time very healthy guy you wouldn't have known there was an issue at all and it really took our family by surprise and and what situation unfolded very quickly was that his prognosis was not good um, you know the the doctors really couldn't help at all he ended up ended up that he had a type of cancer that only four people in the world have ever had only 22 families in the world are known to carry the gene fault no one in Australia had ever had it um, and there four other people that had expressed itself at a young age like that um, you know, the results were not good or positive. And so, you know, it really threw our family in a spin and we searched sort of, you know, high and low for answers, both medical and, and every single option we could in a very short space of time. Um, my brother has an incredibly positive mindset, so mm. um, he certainly was never giving up. So we, we researched overseas and, you know, at the time I was, you know, working full, running full-time business and uh, the nights would be spent just trying to research answers under this, pressure cooker of you know time oh. um and uh so that part of my life's a bit of a blur but um what did happen is we we, we went to all of these different medical fraternities and uh whilst i really you know still believe in medicine integrative approaches and um you know i embrace all worlds is that in his particular situation really natural seemed to be the only um thing that gave a slightly positive uh, chance or felt they could help. And that was a, a clinic called the Gearson Institute. And so um, the next phase of his life, you know, for, for about five years, he really didn't leave the house. He was uh, 13 organic juices a day, um, six enemas a day, Hippocrates soup three times a day, supplements, um, mm -hmm. and you name it. And, uh, you know, I, I, he's still here today and, and living a great life. And so um, watching that unfold, but being a part of that journey, it was huge. Um, but the one thing I, I've always said, and he says the same thing, is that that journey itself was probably the greatest gift I ever got in my life. You know, it was his challenge and the whole family's challenge, but I think deep within challenges come gifts. And there is many challenges I could look back in my life, you know, earlier parts of my life and even later. And um, anytime a challenge comes to me now, I always see it as a gift. There's a gift hiding in there, you know, a yeah. gift of growth or an experience that you meant to have and transform through. And uh, he, his situation left me with the greatest gift, you know, in my whole life because it was actually the time that I opened up to, um, you know, my spirituality. And I think mm -hmm. it was because it was a time that, you know, I the challenge was so overwhelming for me at 24, you know, um, it, it is one thing to go through a health journey, but then to have this enormity of thinking, you know, he's only one of four people in the world. Like, you know, there's billions of people in the world. How, how has this landed on our doorstep in Kellyville? Yeah, 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 <laughs> and, absolutely. You know, and um, I just probably didn't have the mental or emotional maturity to be totally balanced with it. And it really did rock my world um, and uh, unsettled me, but I grew up, really quickly and I think that is what has mostly created my story because I um, 
my spirituality kind of then came to me and it's since that point forward then never has there been a day that I will ever feel alone in the world or ever feel not supported and um, I have a firm belief that answers options life is there for you it's right in front of you all the time and you've just got to have the eyes to see it and look for it and um, it doesn't matter how big the challenges are now and whether the results are the way you want it to come out sometimes you know life is more powerful than us um, but I do always feel supported every day and that changed in my life at that point and it changed my outlook on life from that point forward, you know, there's not a day I don't wake up and, um, you know, even if things are stressful or you're busy or whatever it might be, I wake up and think, yeah, wow, are you breathing? Yep. Great. Okay. It's an awesome day. Everything's in hand, you know, um, that's yeah. really too big of an issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That gratitude is there that, um, you know, is present and that brought you on to starting the business in you know, yeah, to bring products that actually serve and are uh, uh, ethically sourced and, yes. Yeah, totally. Amazing. Yeah, they're correct. Yeah. And uh, my other co-founder, um, David, his name is David too. He, he had gone through a similar journey with his own health and um, mm. well, it's a very similar value system with that. And that is what sparked, you know, wanting to create Inner Origin. And, um, you know, today my life has so much purpose. You know, I feel like I apply my skills to something that means a lot to me. Mm. And so my day is very fulfilled. You know, I feel like every day is inspired action for me. Mm. And um, that's a big difference to just taking action because you have to like I everything to me is because I want to you know very driven um, with what I do because it feels so purposeful and it is I think today in society there's been a big change I know with my clients it's all now people are waking up and going I want meaningful a meaningful life I want to do yes. meaningful work so I love that you've created it so question two, two, one. so tell me too um, what's the best advice that you ever have received uh, best advice I've ever received. Um, sorry, I'm just just one second. I just want we, we just got to notice there's been logged in from another device. I just wanted to see that it's no one come in on this channel. Oh, I think we're good. You might keep an eye on it. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I guess no one's in there. It's just us. <laughs> because <laughs> I've come in through the company oh, account, okay. so I'll keep an eye on it. Um, best advice I've ever received is that um, I guess to seek advice but make your own answers and um, make your own decisions. And that's because I, I firmly believe in asking, you know, if you don't know something, you need help, um, be curious. I think if you can be curious in life, that's the number one thing that I naturally have always been. You know, I, I am so curious. Um, and so I've never had a problem asking because I want to know more, you know, and yeah. digging into things. And so that comes to seeking advice. And um, But you can seek all the advice you want, but at the end of the day, you've got to take ownership for the decision. So I will never implement something in my life by saying, that person gave me advice to do it and that's why I'm doing it. No, I've sought all the advice. I, I assimilate all of that advice. I put it together and I form my own decision. So the way I move forward is mine. I've taken into account advice, but I own that. And I think when you do that and you own it, then the decision becomes so much more powerful and you can never blame anyone else then. You know, you've gone collecting your advice, but you own the decision. I love that. I just love that because it's just taking responsibility and it empowers yourself as well. You know, it does. when yeah. it's far as the winds, you feel empowered to do what you've done. No, no. Definitely. Um, what was your catalyst for success? <laughs> okay. Uh, this question always it's made me laugh. Um, success to me is probably different to everyone else. You know, I think success lands on your doorstep when you give up caring what other people think about you <laughs> and, um, you know, or, or living your life for anyone else's dreams, you know, and because success to me is what makes your heart sing. And, you know, that's really important to me and I imply it in the work that I do now. You know, success to me looks different to maybe what success would look like for you or what success looks like to someone else you know a lot of my friends at the moment they're in the phase of having young families and you know or my sister even my sister-in-law and my brother they just had a little baby and so you know success in her life right now is being the best mum she can be to this yeah. new baby boy um, whereas success to me in my life at the moment because my life's in a different phase is showing up the best way I can all the time for my business and then my family my friends you know but I've got this you know fairly new business and so success to me is measures of that business and not just financial you know it's measures of how well a customer is being served how happy is staff how happy it's all stakeholders and so there's lots of different measures of that success and I think ultimately it's your own fulfillment 
What was the thing though that, it, was there a point in your life, you'd been through everything with your brother, you decided to get the business, was there some kind of linchpin that was a, a see as a catalyst to be whatever your success was? There's something yeah. that went, oh, like a, what was that? Um, yeah, it's interesting. I've been very fortunate. I always say this to people. I believe I had a, a, a blessed upbringing and I always have such gratitude for that. I had two parents that really believed in myself and my brother and I know that's very normal. Um, but from day one, anything we do in life, they would say, we'll just do it. You know, if you come up with an idea, go do it and go be the best you can be at it. Like, you know, they would always say to us, you can be anything you want to be. You're going to have to work hard, but anything you choose to put your time and effort to, you can do brilliantly. And there are no dreams, no goals too big. And, um, you know, my mum and dad always inspired that in us. They always believed in us. And, and, and my dad especially, you know, gave, I guess gave us the gift of so much fulfillment comes in life from deeply committing yourself to something, you know, or, or some things like don't do anything half-hearted. And I think when you make that decision to commit yourself to things that you do in your life, judgment comes because once you put yourself out there, it's like, you know, what you're doing with this amazing site and creating these videos, you know, whether you like it or not, people are judging it. They might be judging it positively. They might be judging it negatively. They might say, Oh my goodness, it's crazy, you know, or she's amazing. It, you know, but the minute you give up, not worrying about that, you just do what you've got to do. And as long as at the end of the day, you look in the mirror and know that you've always shown up with the best of your integrity and you're living yeah. life on your terms. So I had, I did have it ingrained in me very young. Um, and I think again, if I'm to revert back to that situation with my brother, cause that's a really good example is that, um, his situation was uh, so serious and we took such, I guess, a non-normal approach to fixing it. And it wasn't because we did, we would have gone down other routes to be quite honest at that time, if there were answers there, but there weren't. And when he went down the route that he did, a lot of people disappeared from our lives because it wasn't comfortable for them. There were a lot of people that stayed very present in our lives, but a lot of people left. And um, that was the biggest lesson for me. It was actually watching him because in the ultimate test of his life, he really, I mean, he, he's never been someone who cares what people think anyway, but he really gave up caring what people think and the amount of opinions that were coming from left, right and centre in a loving way because people only wanted to see him live, but they didn't have all the facts. They hadn't been going to all the doctors we had and this and that and the other. And um, the opinions were really strong coming from a lot of places and they were opinions that didn't believe in his chosen path. And when you're, you know, I guess in some ways rolling the dice with your life, the last thing you need is people saying, oh, I don't believe that's going to work for you. you and um, test, then you have to kind of go. And I love it that you've really taken that on board and gone, yeah, you have to do what feels right. So when yeah. you came out of that period with your brother, I think, and then you started the business, what was the thing that, was there anything that kind of just glitched you into the business or where you felt yeah. that you'd... I think um, the thing that changed for me through my brother's journey is I, I think I was saying to you before, you know, one of the things for me is that I, one of my biggest fears is not reaching my full potential in this life. I think it probably is the, maybe the only fear um, that I have. I don't know if you call it a fear, but I'm, I'm aware of it. It drives me every day. You know, I want to, I want to be the best I can be. I want to deliver the best gifts yeah. I can. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't want to leave anything unturned in that way. And so that drives me every single day. And it was, it was that turning point to believe in myself with that, mm -hmm. you know, belief in myself went to a whole new level um, after walking through my brother's journey, because um, even though I think I had, a lot, I, I tried to give up what other people think, but I must have at some points in time early in my business career and that still let it affect me. Um, whereas when I've embarked on this business journey, I have a limitless mindset and I allow myself to have the biggest, craziest goals. Um, and, and I am gifted that my co-founder um, also has that thinking and has always inspired that in me and, and my father and my brother and mom, all these people around me. Um, but that was the big thing I took away is belief in myself. Like I, I don't need anyone else to believe in me anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I, I totally get that. I, I've heard a similar yeah. thing where it's, it, it, it kind of clocked in where I went, 
Oh, actually, it's all about what I think. It's nothing to do with anyone else. Because right. it's not. It's not. I'm in my reality and my energy. And, and it's yeah. like, it, I, I totally get it. I, I actually physically had that experience of, of yeah. getting it, you know. Yeah. And I always say to people, belief is something that you've got to feel in every cell of your body. Yeah. And yeah. until you feel it in every cell of your body, you don't really believe in yourself. And no. you only know you believe in yourself when, you, when it's tested, because it will be tested. But when you don't waver under that testing, then you know it's in every cell of your body. And that's the difference that I had. Yeah, it's, like, it's almost like going from understanding it to knowing it. Yes, correct. That's the, the yeah. thing that we've got. Agreed. To... Well, question four. <laughs> so what's your best tool for challenges? Uh, so my best tool? True. Yeah, very good. Um, well, I know you want me to speak quite openly, so I will. Um, my best tool for challenges is, uh, I guess one simple one is reading. You know, um, I, I read a lot. I'm constantly learning and evolving. I, I believe in growing the mind a lot. So um, I, mm -hmm. I surround myself with good personal development and that's, for me, often in books or audio books. Um, but the biggest thing for me in facing challenges is I speak to my higher self, the universe, whatever it may be, I ask I ask a lot of questions and I open my eyes to the answers and um, I've learned to have a relationship with that. And um, so when I have a challenge, I, I, I do ask, you know, and um, you, re I, I, you receive answers too. And um, so yeah, whilst I do go to books and things, which I know is a lot more practical for people, I, um, I do oh, ask no, no, and those would... lines come in many ways. Yeah. Um, including your gut intuition, but they also come in invisible ways or in your sleep, in, in dreams or in a meditation or, um, you know, or, or in speaking to somebody, you know, um, the answers can come in a conversation you're having with someone and that person is just streaming the answer that you've been looking for. And it's you, they don't even know why they're saying what they're saying, you know? I love it. I so relate. It's funny. I just had a session today with, um, a man I'm working with, um, Andrew Spine, who's incredible. He's a therapist and a strategist and he's a, um, a human futurist and I'm human brand futurist. So we're working together and going to do a workshop around humanity yeah. And the big, it's, oh, it's amazing conversation. We're actually going to start a podcast together called um, Fast, Faster Future. And just right. talk, because honestly, we could talk for six hours straight. We're just, blah, blah, blah. but what we're talking about today, and I love it because he's just totally as passionate as I am. We're talking about now it's all about reflection and yeah. the key of turning outwards into inwards and to actually listening for that is the key to our success on every level and success being you know whatever it is for a person but it, it's it is about that inner kind of contentment and kind of feeling yourself on a different level and what happiness is for you it is what you're yes. saying i totally get it it's not in the books it's in the reflections in the presence it's in and the conversations being able to listen and hear the messages come through right they do they certainly come through. <laughs> they come through. Now tell me, oh yes, so um, what do you think today's society issue is? Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, I guess given, um, you know, about the business, maybe I should talk yeah. in, in those terms. You know, I think probably one of the biggest issues in society today is there's been a lack of truth and transparency. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, obviously uh, Inner Origin is applying a solution to that in the wellness space. Um, so, you know, in, in the foods we eat and consume, the wellness products, you know, services, not just food, but anything that applies into that wellness space, yeah. you know, supplements, skincare, cleaning, um, the whole lot. We provide transparency about what's actually in products and we have an independent product advisory board that select and certify products onto the platform. We trace the sourcing of ingredients in every product on the platform back to the country of origin. So, you know, whereas on a label, you don't know what country yeah. that a certain ingredient's yeah. been sourced from when you shop within an origin and you will it's all there on the website and so but I think that issue is not just in the wellness area it's across all areas I think and I think you know social media has really applied change to that you know I think um, information delivery was narrowly controlled for a long time and so I don't know if control is the right word, but, um, you know if I look back when we were a child you know where could you get information you know radio, TV, um, but you, you weren't really choosing what you're absorbing, you yeah. were just absorbing. And whereas I think in today's world, 
if we allow ourselves to, we have the choice to what we absorb. And that's a really big difference. You know, people can sit here and listen to your podcast or they can sit and watch, a, you know, a drama, a soapy on the TV. Like what's going to feed your mind more and what's going to mm. free you more and give you more choices and empowerment and grow you. And that's up to the individual. But I think now in today's world, that solution is appearing. You know, we, we have more freedom of content. We have the ability to learn more. Um, you know, science is evolving itself. You know, all of those things are happening, but we have to choose to want to learn all of that and absorb it. Um, but I think that, yeah, it's this transition of truth and transparency to me is the biggest thing. And if you look at, you know, the younger generations coming through, mm. they already know it. Yeah. You know, they, they're not, they're not going to live life on the terms that we accepted, you know, when we were yeah. younger, you know, th they already say no. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah, um, yeah. They were born saying no. <laughs> Completely but, different. Yes. Agree. Yeah. And it's yeah. interesting because I know I'm just also partnering with um, Donna Fisher, um, who I'll be working with, who's an EMF specialist. Do you know about the radio wave? Do you know yeah, Donna? We yeah, we do. Yeah. And uh, just to talk about, and, start, and I'm interviewing her on Thursday, just to talk about that process of, you know, people just don't know, you know, what the right. impact is. And, and also I was just talking to um, Zen, Zensa Water, Zensa, and... Yes. You know, just, just really, and that's what I believe in too. I mean, you're doing a lot of massive thing, but just to really talk about what's quality items for people to see because they don't know the truth about things. And right. then you can make a choice. I mean, even down to vaccines, which I'm, you know, I'm opposed to. And, you know, already there's, I, there's friction when I, because there's the anti-vaccine people and the vaccine people. And it's a real, it's almost like Trump. And, you know, it's very um, provocative for people's conversation. But I want people to make informed choices. If you're going to vaccinate your kids, then know what it does, really. Like that's, yeah. and what you're saying is the society's issue, I think, has been that lack of transparency. Now we're right. coming to a different place of the transparency is coming, then how do we automate or feed that information yeah. and people yeah. go up to speed with that? That's right. And that's why, to me, transparency is the solution because, um, like yourself, you know, we all have our own, I think, belief systems that come from, you know, learning or knowledge or whatever that might be on lots of different, you know, issues in the world. And uh, I think mm -hmm. everyone should be empowered to make whatever decisions they want to make. And that's actually the thing within our origin is that we provide the information so people can make the choices. You know, yes, the Product mm -hmm. Advisory Board does... Um, you know, approve of certain criteria, you know, to make sure products are, you know, free from as many harmful ingredients as possible, all of those kind of things. But at the end of the day, even when it comes to the country of origin of sourcing ingredients, you know, they don't necessarily judge that at a high uh, level. In some cases, yes, if like some countries are known for, you know, that having contaminants, whatever it might be. But um, in a lot of cases, no, it's more about you have the information. So now you're empowered to make a decision. You know, it's not not up to us to say, you know, you should be, you know, uh, vegan, you should be paleo, you should be gluten-free, you should be, you know, all of these different choices are out there for people. And I would never say to people, you know, impose one um, choice among people, but we give all the information so that you can shop by your choices. And you can have all that information. And even though we've done that in the specialty of wellness, I think across the whole world today, that's changing in every area of life. And, and the one thing that, um, and again, that came back from my brother's journey is that mm. we didn't have all the information early yeah. on. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so our choices were very limited at that point. And it was back before social media had really taken off or anything like that. So researching information was very difficult. And uh, we put our mind to doing that. And in, in researching, you learn a lot. You know, you learn a lot that wasn't common knowledge to us at the time. Yeah. And uh, once you know things, you can't unknow. And so I always say to people, you know, knowledge is everything and learning is everything. But having the freedom to learn. If you don't want to learn, you know, you don't want to learn, that's fine. But yeah. for those who do, we should have all the information we need to make the choices that we want to make. That's total empowerment. Empowerment, And actually one of our um, main, you know, slogan lines within our origin is um, a truth empowering your path to vitality. And what that means is we give you the truth 
So then you can make the choices to empower your life to vitality. We're not going to tell you how to get there. That's for you. That's, you know, it's different for everybody. But what we will give you is truth and transparency. Then you're empowered on your life to, to oh, vitality. You're so, it's so in sync because when I did the event last year with the 100 women and I had 25 speakers and I had on one of my panels, I had a cosmetic surgeon and there was a little bit of an uproar on Facebook around, I was going to go and now you hurt. And I'm like, hang on a second. I said, if your daughter comes to you at 16 and goes, I want to get a breast job or a boob job or whatever, aren't you want to go, don't you want to be informed? So yes. you have an educated conversation Find out so she can learn because you can't stop them. They'll do it behind your back. Do you want to know if they're doing Botox, what it's doing to the body? Let them know the truth. And also there's cosmetic surgeons also do amazing things for women who have had breasts taken off and, and problems with their body. And they do help to feel them more, feel, let them feel more confident. Right. So it's like you can't just go, I'm going to, who am I to discern and say that's not right or wrong? I want to be educated, so then you make the choice. You know, right. it's like you push it. If you push against something, it's the same thing as pushing forward. Yeah, you know? it is. It is, and I do believe there's some people who um, don't want knowledge um, and mm. and would rather just go with you know decisions that are out there. You know, don't want to know, and I'm okay with that too. You know, I never. Um, it's their choice to be involved. Or not anyone, but for those who want it, the information should be there. Oh, I love it. Um. <laughs> Teach me something I don't know. Oh my gosh. Teach me something you don't know. There's not well. much you have to say, no. I, one. I know you told me to look at the questions and I didn't because I prefer to Tell answer. me something. Yeah. Tell me something around, because um, you obviously work in this health area and you're seeing a lot of products. Is there anything that the world would be shocked to know about some of the foods or products? Or oh my goodness, so many. Um, look, you know, I think a... A big one is just understanding food laws in each country. Um, you know, that really varies from country to country. And I'm going to be careful what I say on a live video like this. Yeah. Um, but, but countries have certain arrangements uh, with each other of, um, you know, what labelling they can say and what's accepted into that country. So, you know, as an example, often in often situations, you know, um, Products may be labelled, like, for example, a product of New Zealand, but uh, the ingredients and, and the products themselves may not have initially come from there. Um, but, but their arrangement into Australia is that can be repackaged there and become, you know, a product of New Zealand, so to speak. So people make an assumption that the product is from New Zealand. Or that's just one example. There's a lot of that um, around the world. And uh, so I think... It's very complicated area for people to understand, and that's why I love that we have this product advisory board because mm. um, they have a level of knowledge, I guess, that's greater than the average person out there to be able to dismantle um, those things. And even though labeling is becoming more transparent, it's still not all the way there yet. You know, the US is still obviously, you know. Um, I say battling because there's a lot of people who want to change, but, you know, all the, the non-GMO and GMO labelling, and that's still a big issue, um, you know, over here. I think we've got a bit better in Australia in, in terms of that. Um, but it's – so every country has their own lack of transparency, potential, you know, issues. Um, but I think some people really don't know necessarily the depth um, of that. And so, you know, that's why we created Inner Origin was to give customers a level of confidence when they shop, you yeah. know, um, that there is a bit more scrutiny done um, and a company that's really caring about the products they bring forward. And, you know, I think that, you know, there's still an awareness. I, I, I had an interview with someone in the US not so long ago and um, I won't say who because it's coming out soon, you know, through Inner Origin. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they enlightened me to so much about, for example, you know, the chocolate industry. And uh, they sent me a documentary and it, and it showed, you know, issues sort of still happening in, in the sourcing of, um, you know, the cacao and uh, the villages that it's sourced from and, and how those villages are treated and um, mm. that you know, it's still happening among, you know, really big stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was just eye-opening. And, and I thought, you know, I think the one thing we don't realise as people is that money is a resource that fuels a lot of things. 
Yeah. And when we buy something, we are triggering a ripple effect down a chain of so many people's lives, but we don't think about that when we're buying it. Yeah. We just think yeah. about the good or the service that we're in the transaction with. Yeah. But when you really dig into the supply chain, let's say if we take it as a product, for example, we dig into that supply chain, you'd be overwhelmed. You'd be, it, it's just mind boggling to see how many lives are touched by that $10 bill that you've handed over. Mm. Because it might have taken, you know, six, 10, 20 touches of hands to get that product to you, touches of companies and mm. all the way back to farm gate or the growth. And what's the integrity of that pipeline? You know, at, yeah. at some point is someone getting treated unfairly? You know, are you, are you fueling something, you know, not positive or are you fueling something positive? Because it, it does have an effect. And so that's why, you know, I, I like to say is that, you know, I, I dream of a world where we all become a conscious shopper. And that means that we're, mm. we're thinking of that impact when we use that resource, you know, and it's not that we're going to get it right every time, you know, that's for sure. Yeah. But just being mindful of it, mm. that it's not just this direct exchange that we're having. There's a lot of other people's lives that that's fueling and is it fueling in the right way or the not right way? And what clarity do you have on that? And I think because I, I do believe that big change in the world can happen when consumers start to think about that. Yeah, I love that. yeah. We, we can have big change in the world. You know, we, we're either going to start fueling, you know, fair trade or, or not. You know, we're either going to, as, as an example, and every time we shop, we're making a decision on that. And I think a key thing is, because I know I studied Buddhism for a long time and was around it, and one of the things that really made me mindful of was um, that when you eat a piece of, you know, meat or whatever you're doing, you're taking on the karma. They talk about karma that you're taking on from animal meat. But it also actually just comes back to basic energy. So you're actually absorbing the energy of that chain. Wow. So. If you're thinking, oh, I don't really, doesn't affect me out there because it's down and out there, it actually does because you're absorbing that negative or positive action yeah. that's happened and it affects your cells. So I think yeah. in that way, bringing people conscious to it does impact you physically. It does. Yeah, and, and um, you know, a good example for you, and, you know, people might find this interesting and, um, yeah. you know, I'd, I'd encourage you to go talk to farmers and ask, you know, yeah. um, for example, there's a farmer, uh, you know, involved within an origin up in uh, Bow Desert in Queensland, and he's a dairy farmer, but a very, um, you know, runs a very ethical dairy farm, and I know people have judgments on dairy or not, um, it's not the, really the point of what I'm going to say. Um, but, you know, dairy is a big industry. And you probably remember along came the situation of a dollar milk, you know, quite some time ago. And, you know, I went out to do an interview with him. And uh, it really broke my heart when you heard the details of how damaging that was mm. to these dairy farmers. And he explained to me that dairy farmers need around 70 to 75 cents per litre to run a profitable farm. And, and he said when it, he meant profitable, he meant, you know, being able to reinvest in machinery, fix their machinery, all that kind of thing. Not living a lavish life, yeah. but being able to right. run a, a business successfully and keep it going. And when Dollar Milk came about, they got cut, uh, he told me, and, 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 you know, do your own homework, to around 35 cents, you know, a litre. And he said, you know, people don't realise, they, they run in to buy this milk that's on sale, you know, up the back of the store and, and so that they can buy it for a dollar a litre. And he said, you know, to think that, you know, that 80 cents or that dollar saving that you're getting on the liter of milk for your household, but it's putting farmers out of business. And he said, farmers are losing generational farms, like farms that they've had in their, their history for five mm -hmm. generations. And they can't keep it. And he said to me, you know, and, and I've done research on that since that, you know, that it's the, in one of the highest industries of suicide and depression because they can't make ends meet, you know, it's all they've ever known. You know, so he said to me, I don't have any other skill. I've grown up with this. This is a generational farm. And, uh, you know, the situation that's forced upon them. But yet as consumers, we don't think about that. We just think of the 80 cents or the dollar we're saving 
And guess what? It's going to go up because there won't be the dairy there and they're going to be $3 a litre. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's right. going, going to yeah. hit us on the back of the head because of that. And yeah. that horrible video that I saw too, because what happens in then is that people are trying to cut on certain ways and then the cows get mistreated. I saw a terrible video on some of the dairy farmers. I think it was in America but yeah. that happened. And that's because everyone's trying to make a buck and they don't also have the consciousness around it wow. that it actually impacts us in the end. Or we, wow. won't, we won't have any food. Food's going to be so expensive because we're not looking after the people that make it. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, and definitely, you know, organics on the rise, you know, as you know, and, um, you know, all the projections say, you know, I don't think the world's equipped to uh, feed everybody with organic food supply um, and it's yeah. definitely fast growing. So, yeah, it's, you know, I mean, it's good that all of these challenges, you know, ahead. Um, mm. But I think if we just become mindful as consumers and, and say, like, what are we fueling? And again, just be curious, you know, well, why is that? what it is and how is it affecting people. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Now, you have, I know what this one is because we talked about your brother, but I would like to know the biggest shift yeah. for you in starting the business as a businesswoman doing, you know, wonderful things in the world. Um, is there something that's happened for you inside the business or that's, you know, since it began? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Uh, we actually we launched um, in Origin November 25, 2016. So, you know, wow. we're still a baby. It's yeah, not yeah, yeah. Um, that old. Uh, I mean, as far as this shift goes, it's just been a whirlwind. Um, you know, it's every day has just gone at such a rapid pace. Um, the shift for me would be that the journey of the business, I, it feels very supported um, and I think that's because as we spoke about, it feels like a, a, it's on a purpose, you know, something that's deeply fulfilling. And so I feel supported from people around me. Um, you know, I feel supported from all the team, but, and I feel supported universally, you know, and I think the biggest shift for me was to get very specific and get very clear. And because when I look at, you know, a lot of successful people who may or may not harness, you know, the the support of the universe around us yeah. um, intentionally. But if you look at successful people, they're very clear. They have a lot of clarity and they're very, you know, descriptive of the result they're looking for. And so I've trained myself and I still do every day to be very clear and specific mm. as what, as to what I, I need, like delivered in this path, this, you know, journey, what the goals are. I'm very clear and specific. And it's, it's overwhelmed me how quickly those things have showed up. And um, the more clarity that I've had, the quicker those things have showed up. And so that's been my biggest shift is getting really clear and, um, you know, just taking action, I guess, leaving perfection out the door. I'm um, Virgo, so perfection is <laughs> ingrained in me. That's not easy to overcome that. <laughs> I think you live with that. My husband's Virgo. I totally understand. <laughs> it's good. So, yeah. So um, yeah, there's been a, there's been a lot of shifts, you know, in in that way of you know the business journey. But I think yeah. clarity is probably the big one for me. I love that advice. Because yeah. when you have when you have clarity, you make decisions easily. Yes. And yes. I think when you don't have clarity, you procrastinate. Um, and procrastination is the biggest killer. <laughs> It is, and I think from because you know when I work with clients and doing their branding, and, and it is the hardest thing is to get people to make uh, choices and to get clear about what they want. Even if I go forget about money, they're still like, and so it's like not wrong, but it's yeah. process, and it's yeah. like making people conscious of, oh, okay, you know that's what I need to be looking at, and I think it's it's great that you've totally tapped into that and well, actually probably um just on that note i know you're at the end of your questions but i'll add this because it is something that's really important to me yeah. and when you talk about you know shifts is that uh, i've learned to accept that change happens hmm. and learn to love it you know either you instigate change 
or the world's going to instigate change on you. Because if you choose to stay put, everything's changing around you. Life's not going to stay as it is anyway. So if you can learn to live in an uncomfortable place, life becomes very happy, you know, and that's because change is going to happen and embrace change. You know, the reality is tomorrow is not going to be what yesterday was. And um, life can change in an instant. It will change in an instant yeah. and learn to be adaptable and flexible to that so that it doesn't overwhelm you. I think if you can learn to love challenges, challenges and change then life becomes a lot happier and uh, it becomes a lot more fulfilling and if you if you can embrace that and definitely that's been a shift for me because I, I do embrace change now and I embrace challenges and I I let go a lot quicker you know I do it you know, yeah. with the you know um, I do it when we do speaking people say you know what is um one of the best tools to keep yourself motivated and I say learning to let go the quicker you can let go of things the the more free you are you know the, the heavy backpacks taken off so the quicker you can let go of you know drama the yeah. the whinging of what's holding you back the scars and wounds from your journey or whatever it might be the quicker you can do the work on that and rip it up and throw it in the past and say it's in the past it's not in my life right now and so the future is all mine yeah. um that, you know that's that's one of the biggest things to keeping the mental positivity and uh motivated yeah so many wonderful gold nuggets in there. Thank you so much. Um, uh, we're going to have to have this conversation again probably in a year, I'd say. Okay, great. I want to I'll see the journey. I'll be a different person in a year. <laughs>